Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to get her to sing some more, but she won't. <laughs> you got to see what the people are clapping and sing. <laughs> if they're ready to keep one, if they keep clapping and singing, we just got to keep it going, right? And she'll sing until 8.30, and I'll just not have to preach, and I'll be good to go. <laughs> Amen. It's good to be in the house of God one more time. And uh, I want to read to you from the book of Genesis for tonight's service. And uh, hopefully preach just for a short time. <sighs> yeah. No, it's serious. I only got three pages. <laughs> Prepare this afternoon between 3 and 4 o'clock. <laughs> or, yeah, somewhere around the time. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, but but the thought has been in my heart since Friday night. <laughs> but um, I just want to, before I read, I just want to encourage you all to keep on inviting people to church, right? Uh, we didn't make our goal, sad to say, we didn't make our goal this week. We had a very busy week, though. A lot going on this week, and um, we got 20th still. 28th within the week, so we didn't quite make that 50. But the good part about life is you don't live in the past. <laughs> uh, you just get up and say, this week I will make it. Right, this week I'll make it. So keep on inviting. Let me know how many you invite, you know, whenever I see you. And we'll just keep a tally of it. And like I said, it's, all we're doing is, uh, is we set a goal and we're working towards that goal. But in the midst of that goal, we're... We are um, sharing God's word. In the midst of that goal, we are getting better at improving our people skill. <laughs> right? In the midst of that goal, we are pushing ourselves to learn how to approach people and talk to them. Right? So it's a lot of things that, are, that, that can happen in the midst. You know, because we all need to grow and develop and become better. I don't know about you. I've been doing this for years, and I can walk up to people and talk to them, but I still get nervous all the time. <laughs> I do. I just got to feel the fear and just do it anyways, you know. And so it's not easy. I may, I may look, make it look easy sometimes, but it's not, right? It's not really. And so really, it's a really encouraging thing to see. Um, I went to a park yesterday after, give them a little break. We went back around 7 o'clock to a park, invite everybody at that park, you know, <laughs> that I can meet and talk to and got somebody's number and, you know, communicate and stuff like that. So it's not easy, but uh, God can help us. And so I want to encourage you to keep on inviting. We're going to hit that 50 this week, right? We're going to do it. Just let me know. And um, we'll work together with that. And keep praying 15 minutes a day, right? Y'all been meeting that 50 minutes? Has it been a blessing? Every day, right? 50 minutes every day? See? You can do it. And then after a month, we'll increase it to 20 minutes. And then after that, we'll go to 25. Well, if we can't conquer 15, then what's the user going to 20? <laughs> right? So that's what it is. I'm, all I'm trying to do is build good, healthy, spiritual habits. And in the midst of it, it will all work to the glory of God. We'll be better soul winner, better prayer warriors. Our church, our church will become a praying church and a soul winning church. Right? And, uh, and, and that, that's a good thing when a church is praying and a church is soul winning. God's work is being done. It doesn't matter, but all, you know, as long as we're doing what God wants us to do, He will continue to bless. Amen? And so tonight I want to read to you from Genesis. See, that took up five minutes. All I need is 15 more minutes of preaching. I'm good. <laughs> Genesis chapter 32, we'll read on verse 24 through um, 30. We'll go with that for now. He said, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. But he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Let me turn this down. Let me, let me control it up here. It might be better. It's kind of high up here. And he said, Unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, thou hast powered with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, 
thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And I want to use verse 24 as our text. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And Jacob was left alone. And using that for a title tonight, with the help of God, I want to pray just for a little while in a message entitled, Alone with God. Alone with God. Let's look to the Lord in prayer tonight. Father, let us stay focused as pastor minister your word. Let us understand your will and do all things pleasing in your sight, giving you the honor and glory. Father, bless the message and the messenger in Christ's name. Amen. 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 I want to preach about alone with God. And it deals with that situation where an individual is not distracted by anything or by anyone, but they are in a place where God has their full attention and where they can get alone with the Lord and, 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 and spend some time with Him. But I like the, this story because, you know, for some reason I can, in a sense, relate to it from the perspective of this man wrestling with Jacob. Because there's, there's one thing I like to do is I like to wrestle with my kids <laughs> on the floor. I don't know, maybe it's something that dads do a lot. Uh, maybe it's a dad thing. And here we're seeing that God, being the father of all fathers, is the same, right? He's there, Jacob, the Bible said he was there praying. And I, I, don't, I, can, I can just use my imagination. <laughs> you know, there he is. Nobody's around. He's there all by himself. He's praying, seeking God, talking to God. You know, there's a lot of things ahead of him. A lot of, he had problems and issues he, he had to face. He had decisions to make. He had to go out there and face his brother Esau. And a new life ahead of him, a big family. Eleven boys and one girl and another one on the way. And so he had a lot going on and, and he's been going from one thing to the next and one thing to the next. You know, sometimes your life is so busy, you're going from one event to, to the next or one situation to the next. And that's what was going on. He was working, working, trying, planning. God told him to get up and go back home. And, and, and so the, all this stuff was going on. And then he heard that Esau is coming to meet him. So more stress and anxiety began to occupy his mind and his life. And so he felt the need to get alone with God. He felt the need to just steal away, spend some time in prayer. And I can imagine Jacob just on his knees, praying, talking to God, you know, and, and, and pouring out his heart to the Lord and just communicating with God and just talking and eyes closed and focus in heaven. And all of a sudden, this man just grabbed him and threw him on the ground <laughs> and began to wrestle with him. And they say, man, that's something that a dad will do, <laughs> right? That's something that a father will do. He'll grab his son or grab his daughter and wrap them up on the ground and just begin to spend some real good quality time with them. Enjoy that moment on the floor, right? Sometimes it's the best thing to me. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a relationship building thing, right? You're there with your kids and, and you're there just spending some time on the floor. I mean, yeah, you can take them to the park and run around and all this stuff or you can just you know, laying on the ground. <laughs> and to me, it's more of a lazy spending time. Why chase them around and burn energy when you can wrap them up on the ground and let them fight for their life, right? <laughs> and you give them a little break and they're released and the thing they're getting when you close right back in, you know, and you can just taunt them quite for a long time, <laughs> right? You can just mess with them for a long time and, and test their strength. I like to do that, test their strength. Man, this, this dude's getting strong, <laughs> you know? Or she's, she's strong, she's wiry, you know? And, and I, I like it because it, it just shows me the relationship. In my life, I don't know about all fathers, but that's just me, right? I love that. Something I enjoy. I do it almost daily, right? Or whenever I get a chance. Wrestling with your children. It's a beautiful thing. And so I feel here God connecting with Jacob. Jacob was alone with God. 
He was alone praying, alone seeking him, and God came in a way to relate to him as a father will relate to his son. He just began to wrestle. He began to wrestle with him, began to spend some quality time, began to assure him, and the Bible said they wrestled not for a short time, but he said until the break of day. All night, I don't know if Jacob was getting tired and wore out and maybe the Lord was letting him go for a little bit and then pull him back down or whatever they were doing, right? They were just having a good old time, father and son relationship. And I feel that's needed a lot of times in our life. We just need to get away for a little bit, right? We need to get to the place where we can be alone with God and wrestle with the Lord. Maybe not necessarily you will be rolling around with God on the floor, but I guarantee you this one thing. You stay long enough in one place talking to God and praying with God praying to God and spend and fellowship with God all of a sudden uh, you will begin to feel God come down all of a sudden you you will feel that that presence of the Lord just coming right where you are when you least expect it uh, you will feel God just wrapping his arms around you and God spending some quality time with you and that's needed in a Christian's life alone time with God when the family is not around, when the kids are not around, when the wife is not around, when husband is not around, when parents are not around, everybody is out of the way, and you and God alone. That time is needed. Amen. You say, well, preacher, I live by myself. I'm always with God alone. Well, you need that time. Sometimes the television can get in the way. Right? Sometimes uh, things can get in the way, activities can get in the way, and we need to get that out of the way. And get that alone time with God. Get that alone time with God. It will create. We, uh, the Bible said Jacob is the one that created that meeting place. If you read up a little bit, a couple of verses in verse 22. The Bible said, And he arose that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the fort Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook. And send them over, and, and sent over, sent over that he had. So everything that he had with him, his wives, his children, his belongings, everything, cattle, everything, he just took them and sent them over the brook. But the Bible said he stayed on the other side. So all his family on one side of the brook, all his cattle, all the distraction, he didn't have to go chase after the sheep or the goat or the, any cattle that was there. He didn't have to go sh chase after anything or corral anything and, and, or watch over anything. All his children is on the other side. His wives are on the other side. Servants on the other side. And Jacob was there alone, all by himself. And the, and the thing is, he created that situation. He created that, that moment where he can be alone with God. And that's so needed. A lot of times, we as Christians, we have to create that opportunity to be with God. Because if you leave it to happen, it will never happen. There will always be something that needs to be done. There will always be something that needs attending to. When you get everything out of the way and you begin to sit down and think, Oh, I need to go do this. I need to go do that. I need to take care of this. I need to take care of that. But we have to create that moment. We have to create that opportunity where we can, we can spend time with God. We have to push away their responsibilities or leave them alone for a little bit, whatever, and say, you know what? I need this alone time. I need this alone time. I need to spend some time wrestling with my father. I need to connect in a way that I haven't connected before. I need to make that, that alone time to where nothing is in the way, no distraction, nothing that I have to tend to, but I can just focus 100% completely on God and, and spend this quality time with Him and receive of the Lord. And I can tell you this one thing, as you begin to, to, to make that time, make that situation, make that opportunity to where you're spending with God, you will never regret it. You will never, absolutely never regret it because the Bible said as Jacob created this atmosphere of an alone time with God, God came down. God met him right where he was. God began to wrestle with him. God began to spend time with him. God, no doubt, probably was longing. He said, man, this guy's been busy way too long. I need this time with him also. 
Amen. A lot of times fathers need their time with their children. Children may not understand it, but, man, I, sometimes I can't wait to get home. I need some time with my, with my kids, right? I need some alone time. I need some, some wrestling time, all right? And sometimes the kids, I know sometimes uh, my, my daughter will say, Daddy, come on, let's wrestle. Not, she don't like it all the time. <laughs> but there are times when I don't want to do it, she wants to do it. <laughs> come on, let's wrestle on the floor. Let's, let's, let's do it. And what I'm saying is it's a relationship-building thing. It's a good relationship building thing when we can wrestle together with the Lord, alone with God, God with us uh, and us with God. Nobody in the way, nobody distracting us, nobody stealing away our attention, nothing drawing uh, off of our mind and, and, uh, and anything else but us, just us and God just being there in God's presence. Amen. Being there in God's presence. Uh, the Bible tells us about Daniel. He did this three times a day. It didn't matter what was happening. It didn't matter how busy he was. The Bible said he made times. He made, he made, uh, he made, he created that opportunity three times a day to pray and to spend time with God. Even when his life was at risk. And when they said, Daniel, if you don't pray, if you, if you don't stop praying to your God, we will cast you to the lions. The Bible said that didn't stop him. He just went out there and said, this is what I do. This is what I do three times a day. I create this opportunity where I can fellowship with my father. And I wonder what his prayer life was like. I wonder what his prayer life was like to the point where he said, you know what? Not even my life will keep me out of this moment. Think about it. I wonder how, that ex how good that experience was to where that when his life was placed, when his life was being threatened... It didn't even move him. He's, he valued that time, that alone time with God, more than his own life. He valued it so much to where the Bible said he, did, he wasn't even trying to hide it. He went into his house. He opened the window towards Jerusalem, and he prayed three times a day. He prayed three times a day. It meant something to him. Maybe it was in those moments that God gave him some great uh, uh, revelation, some great uh, inspiration some great moments of, of him, maybe just like Jacob, maybe God came down and, and he knew it and he felt the, the presence of God and he felt the closest of God as he was there, right there praying in that alone time with God. God was meeting him there. God was strengthening him. He was in a strange land, in a strange place, and he was in a strange kingdom. And he knew there was a, a lot of things that, that wasn't right in that place, but he needed God. He needed to stand strong in his faith and to be an example of what? a godly man should be in the midst of idolatry, in the midst of a crooked nation, in the midst of people that didn't really know much about God. He needed to stand strong and he spent it on his knees three times a day carving out that alone time with God. And I tell you what, I can just only imagine it. I may not be able to speak 100%, but I can guarantee somewhere along the line, God came down in those prayer meetings. God came down and met him in those, a lot, those a time that he spent with God alone and God will do the same thing for us just like he wrestled with Jacob he will wrestle with us maybe not a physical wrestling match but you will begin to feel him amen you will begin to feel his closeness his fellowship if you make that alone time with him you have to do it if you want that closeness with God the Bible talked about the prophet Habakkuk in chapter 2 verse 1 he said I will stand upon my watch I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Habakkuk was saying, this is my time that I meet with God. He said, I will stand upon my watch in this guard tower, wherever he was, uh, that, that he was seeking God. This was his place. This was his place that he carved out to meet with God. This is his place that he uh, make. Like I said, Jacob created that environment to meet with God. This, is, this, is, this was Habakkuk's, Habakkuk's place. He said, I will stand upon my watch. That speaks of a guard tower, right? a guard shed. He said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. Wherever it was that he was sitting there, maybe he found an old tower somewhere. And he said, you know what? This will be my alone place with God. This is where I will go and meet with God, uh, where there is nobody to mess with me, nobody to bother me. Oh, Habakkuk, I need this. No, you can't get to me right now. This is my alone time with God. 
I need you to do this. No, no, I'm too busy with God right now. Leave me alone. Right? He created. I'm talking the message tonight is we have to create that time. We have to create that place. We have to create that environment where we can be alone with God. Where we can spend time with the Lord. It's necessary. It's vital for Christian survival. It's vital for Christian growth. It's vital for us to draw closer to God. And the beautiful thing about it is when you created the opportunity, God will meet you. When you create the opportunity for God to meet with you, He will meet with you. He will not disappoint you because He will see that you mean business. You are willing to shut out all the distractions. You're willing to lay aside everything that will get in the way. You have waited, whether it's early in the morning or late in the night, you have allowed this time to where there is nothing in your way, just you and God. And He will meet with you. The Bible said in Psalms 27 verse 14, He said, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We are the one tonight have to create that alone time with the Lord. Everything in this life will try to intervene in that time. The first thing you come and say, well, well, I've had a busy day. I need to brain dump. <laughs> and you go read a book and relax. Or need to watch something and relax. I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying, you know, that will begin to take over. And before you know it, you spend hours and hours doing that and say, oh, time for me to go to bed. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm wore out. You know what I'm saying? You have to create that time. You have to create that time and give him the best of it. Don't give him that moment where you're all tired and wore out and <laughs> get on your knees and fall asleep. Speaking from an experienced preacher, oh, yes. <laughs> I fell asleep on my knees many times because... Uh, the time that I created for him was after everything was done. And by the time I began to spend time with him, <laughs> the body was shut down <laughs> for the night. So we got to make that conscientious decision and make it as something that is consistent. And make it and determine with a made up mind to carve out that time. We have to create that special place to where we can, and, 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 I, and I use the word wrestle because that's what happened here, right? To where we can wrestle with the Lord. Think of it as a father and child relationship. He's, the, he's our heavenly father, I'm his child. Daddy, let's wrestle, <laughs> right? Let's, let's wrestle. Let's, get in, let's spend some time together. The Bible said, as Jacob created this, 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 this thing, God show up in such a loving way. I don't think there's any better way to show up than, to, <laughs> than for a father to show up and, and just grab his son Jacob and took him down to the ground. That's beautiful in my eyes. <laughs> I don't know what anybody is thinking. Well, that's, that's actually, uh, uh, was a wonderful experience to me. To just to see the Lord, to, to see that, 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 that human aspect of how he, you know, he didn't come and, oh, I am the great God, you know. You're seeking me, uh, bow before me or whatever. He didn't come in that way. He just came in a fatherly way. He knew his son needed him. He knew Jacob needed to meet with him. And he came in that fatherly, loving way and just grabbed him and took him down to the ground and began to rest. Maybe he just choked him a little bit and just let go as he resists and just, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you know, I don't know if you know. I don't know if you know, but I know. <laughs> but, but I can just imagine how beautiful it was. How beautiful it was. And that was a, that was a, a life-changing experience because at that point, uh, God changed everything about Jacob. He changed his name from a supplanter to a prince. He said, your name will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Because as a prince, you wrestle with God and prevail. Right? And God, God touched the hallow of his thigh, and he no longer walked the same. Right? God set his mark upon him. Because he carved out that alone time with God. And God gave him something that he will never forget. There's a song that says, there's always something there to remind me, right? God gave Jacob something to remind him that that moment where God wrestled with him was a life-changing experience. Every time he, he got up and he tried to walk, he had a limp, right? He had a limp, and every time he limped, he remembered, man, God wrestled with me. My father was there when I needed him. My father came in a loving way and took me down to the ground and wrestled with me and powered me. And we fought all through the night in a loving way. And I could not, I could not escape from him. He was showing me how strong he was. And yes, even though I wrestled and I 
got out and everything. God was showing me how powerful and how strong he is and that he's able to hold me and, and keep me and keep me close to him. It was a beautiful moment in history. Never have you ever read about that ever happening in scripture. You read about God coming down and walking with Adam and Eve in the garden. You read about God meeting Abraham at his tent uh, uh, there and, and before he went in and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. You read about how God appeared to uh, um, Gideon where he was there and, and called him to go out into battle. But never have you ever read about uh, God wrestling with a man. <laughs> never that, that loving experience of God just uh, as this man created this environment. He got rid of everything. And he said, you know what? This is my time. I will spend some time with the Lord. And as he got alone with God, God came down. And that's the beautiful thing about getting alone with God. God will come down. God will come down. God will meet you. God will bless you. God will fellowship with you. God will make time for you. And God will wrap his arms around you. The presence of the Lord will be there. You come to this man. As, Jake, as Jeremiah said in tw Jeremiah 23 verse 13. He said, And ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. That all your heart searching for God is a time that we have to create. Amen. We have to create that environment where we are wrestling with God. And I'm using, like I said, using the word wrestling because that's what the Bible said. He wrestled the fought. And I can totally relate to it. It's a beautiful thing when your father, <laughs> when a father wrestling with their children. It's beautiful. It's a, it's a love. It's just nothing but love in the tell. Right? It's just a... <laughs> Fathers love to torture their children anyways, but, but it's all done in love. It's all done in love, and, you know, and, and it's just a beautiful thing. And, and that's the point I want, I'm really trying to emphasize. As he created that environment to be alone with God, God didn't come down in some, like I said, in some commanding way and, or commission him. He came down in the most loving way, the most personal way, the most amazing way, the most wonderful way. He showed up because Jacob created that environment. I want to be alone with God. The wife are over there, children are gone, everything. He got everything out of the way. And he stayed on the other side of the brook. I don't know how wide the brook was, whatever. But he stayed on the other side to where he was totally alone. He created that, that moment to be with God. And the Lord showed up in such a wonderful way. Oh, his presence is here tonight. His presence is here tonight. Amen. And, and if you create that environment where you can be alone with God, maybe, who knows, God show up in such a loving way, such a wonderful way, a father. Like I said, I've, I've never read it any other place in the scripture. I read about John in the island of Patmos. He showed up in power, spoke to him. You know, the apostle Paul in the glory of heaven uh, took him up to heaven. Uh, uh, different prophets, he appeared to Moses in the burning bush. But this is the only time I've ever read where he seems he came down and just grabbed that man <laughs> and took him down. It was beautiful. Beautiful. Most personal way ever. Most personal way because he created that moment. God, I want to be, I want to spend some time with you. And that's something about alone with God. When we create that environment, that, that environment to be alone with God, who knows how wonderful and how beautiful it will be when he come down and spend some time with us. It will be special. Amen. It will be absolutely special. As you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord tonight, the message tonight is make, create, create that alone time with God. Create that alone time with God and, and see. It may, not, it may not happen the first time. It may not even happen the second time or the third time. But as you consistently create that alone time with the Lord and you go back to that place and say, God, this is my time with you. This is my moment to meet with you. God will show up and he will bless you in such a way you will never forget it. Jacob will never forget that moment. Amen. She's going to play thing. Let's spend some time in prayer tonight. Father, bless now I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
encourage you to this week we'll use that word to spend some time and wrestle with the Lord create that environment where you can be alone with God and, and just, just spend some quality time with your Heavenly Father and let God strengthen you bless you and do great things for you Amen? And God will and God will God will help us and just like I said remember to, um, to keep inviting keep inviting load up on your ammunition Pamphlets, that is. <laughs> Probably violate whatever, who cares. But talking about pamphlets and just, uh, just invite some people. Pray that God will help you do it. And let me know, like I said, we're going for 50 again by Sunday morning. We can do this. God will help us. And remember the 15 minutes of prayer. And if you feel, feel up to it, just go to 20. Increase it. My goal is to help you to pray more, right? Increase it to 20. That's what I do. I set it for 15 and then I just keep going, <laughs> right? And so God will bless us. And let's have a good week, Bible study on Tuesday at 7.30. For all you who join us online, have a blessed week. And um, keep us in prayer. We'll pray for you.
And let's have a good time in the Lord. Marvin, would you close us? Father, thank you for all your accomplishments this evening. Father, keep your hands upon us and bring us back to the next upon a time. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen.